So in this one, what we're going to want to do is actually set up our table um, more or less as step six with a timer. So that way, once it's enabled, it will start preparing to freeze this. We'll have to actually check for the base and make sure things actually work out properly. Um, since this one's a single step, it'll be fair a single offset or single level. Um, it'll be fairly easy to deal with, but we'll go ahead and set that up and then put our Lua script inside this. Um, and of course this one, yeah, we already use already Lua script, so it won't be too much with that. But um, So, much like our auto attach timer, it's going to be fairly similar. Um, we can go ahead and start with, with the timer itself. Um, this one's just going to be, stay, you know, it's just going to stay inside that one script, so we don't really need to get too crazy with naming it something unique. Um, to make sure this doesn't conflict with the. Um, the timer function itself which it shouldn't the way Lua works but let's just go ahead and be explicit here and call it freeze timer instead um, again it's at this point that I prefer it to just be set to nil so we'll want to go ahead and set up our interval and this one um, about the easiest way and to make sure to set it up basically so it works much the same way as the, um, the freeze itself. We can go ahead and say get freeze timer. And just use the interval from our freeze from Cheat Engine's freeze timer. So not too much there. Here we don't really want to have a max or anything like that. We just want to freeze the value and that's about it. Um, main thing we'll do is we'll be checking to make sure that our, that we actually get an address and it's not just zero more or less. Um, that base pointer. So let's go ahead and make our our function here. base of that set up. Um, so what we're going to want to do is actually check that this pointer step 6 is set and it's not just 0. Um, so there's really a couple ways we can do that. Um, first we'll probably want to make sure that it's been declared. So this way if this fires one time before it even gets allocated properly or the you know the symbol is even created. So we'll probably want to do get address safe. And then oh we need that as a string. So we'll check that to make sure it's not nil. If it's not then we're gonna continue with our check basically. So we'll wanna possibly even just go ahead and get address safe again and then this time what we'll do is we'll actually check the value at that address um, and then see if that's not nil. If it's not then we're going to go ahead and freeze basically. So what we'll want to do <coughs> is just set this up. Um, yeah we're going to actually want another with a higher scope on it. Um, Say freeze value. Um, yeah, we really won't want to ever set this to much. Uh, we'll just go and make it nil by default. And so we'll say if our freeze value is equal to nil, then we're just going to set it first. And we'll just um, now, actually, we want to freeze that to a specific value. 
Um, see, so normally like in a game you might want to freeze it at its default value, so doing it this way would be a good idea here. We actually want it to be 5,000, I do believe. Yeah, I'm not, I might, it should be either 1,000 or greater or something like that. I think it's 5,000 by the time you get to this step. Um, so here this makes it a little bit easier even we can just basically straight right to the value each time um, We could actually read the value and check to see if it's not 5,000, but we're not gonna worry about that um, It'll actually be one more step in some sense So here we just want to write an integer. I do believe it is an integer not a float integer and then just because it is in fact a um, zero offset this is all we really need to write to that to that address and then we'll go ahead and pass for the value our freeze value and this will basically freeze the um, the value at that 5,000 So here what we can go ahead and do to make sure we don't really run into any issues either and so we can actually kill the timer. Oops, we need that to be global. So we want to do a step 06 timer enabled. And here what we'll want to go ahead and do to value a true. Um, basically we'll just want to check to see if that global is true if it's not then we'll want to destroy our timer set up so that way we can actually disable and basically we'll set this to false in our um, disable code so that way we can properly disable this timer as well. So here or we'll go ahead and put that code and then on down here Go ahead and set that to false. And then that'll allow this function to catch that it's not true, so we don't actually want to freeze the value anymore and we just want to destroy the timer. Um, and then this way, the way this is set up, it will run this stuff first, but at the same time, if this has already been flipped, which will happen here before it does anything else and we'll go ahead and we'll understand that it's you know things have been deallocated and we don't want to do this anymore we don't want to even check for these because they would fail either way um, and like I said in the previous tutorial this will work in order so that way you know if, um, if this has been deallocated and this comes up false or nil then it won't even check to see if that address exists. But if it doesn't come up nil, then it'll check this. And then of course, if this is zero, um, kind of like it's showing down here right now, if that's pointing to the zero address, then it won't, it'll come back nil because zero isn't seen as a proper address. It's not really used by any process. So that should have a set there go ahead and enable a bunch of these. Um, another thing to even talk about too, we can go ahead and create a, head, a header here. And we can sub everything up underneath this. Make it a child of it um, and not necessarily want to hide it so this way you can do things individually. But we can set it up to where if we activate this, it'll automatically try and activate all the children. Um, if we do that, we probably also want to set deactivate as well. So that way, whether you're in at, you know, activated or deactivated, it's going to do the same thing to all the children below it. Um, so that way we can just click that one thing and get everything run through real quick. So 
So let's go ahead and hit the step six. Oh, we're going to head next, next. Uh, step five. So here's where it should be freezing the value. And we are not. So we'll want to look at that and figure out why. Sure, we don't have a return or something like that in here. Uh, oh, we never actually set up our timer. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so our freeze timer, we need to actually create it here. Because this one has that auto attach, we don't really need to. We could go ahead and explicitly put that check in here, especially if you know you're using an older version. Um, but we don't really need it because, in theory, this global has already been set by our main function when it auto attaches. Um, so we want to set our interval here. And then the last thing, we want to set our on timer function. And this should actually have the setup correctly here. And then that should still, well, the function was never run, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but if we go ahead and set that now, we can actually see that it instantly went ahead and changed the value there. Before we do that step eight, we might even want to close this out, reattach. No, I should have done that. And then double check to make sure it actually doesn't throw an error early on. Um, if you do like I did, you can just go ahead and reattach and it'll ask you if you want to keep the address list. You say yes and then it'll ask you if you want to disable everything without running the disable code. We just want to hit yes there as well. Let's go ahead and enable everything again. We're not getting any errors yet. In which this, so this timer is already running, but it's checking stuff so this way it's not going to throw an error is the idea. Step 6 here and it does freeze the value already so as soon as that other, you know, the steps timer runs out it'll check and then we're good um, so basically now we're on the step a as we can see here we can go ahead and disable that and it doesn't throw an error or have any issues there um, 